Sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And that person shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit, not your wife's fruit, not your pastor's fruit, your own fruit in his season. Now I think we quote that, but there's a season. Yes. Yes. And your season of growing the fruit. Have you ever prayed and nothing's happened? You know? You ever prayed and you need to pray a little while? And you pray about something for a, a period of time and then things begin to change? See, we work in seed, time, and harvest. And if, if we're still bouncing with the Scripture and take Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower, and you take all this and tie it in together, then you've got to understand that your, green, your leaves are not always going to be withered. But when you get some fruit, it remains. When you get your prayers answered, that answered prayer remains. It stays. Now notice that. He says, in his season, his leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Man, that's powerful. Amen. Well, now let me say this, because the Holy Ghost wanted me to mention this somewhere, and I thought I was going to do it, give it a thought. But some of you came up for healing through all out this revival. And, uh, and uh, so you came up, but, but in that, what I wanted to get at is when it... I'm trying to think how I could say it. When you come for healing, at that time, you received your healing. But did you know there is, and I hope I, I mean I, I may be stepping on out in the out in the deep here. I don't know where what y'all believe in. But you can, if you don't watch what you're doing, lose that healing. That is the fruit of healing. In other words, you want that fruit to remain. Amen. Now, again, I'm taking a risk because I don't know what's saying. I'm not trying to preach doctrine. I'm just trying to help you keep your healing. That's my heart. It's to keep your healing. Just as if you could miss out and, so to speak, backslide or miss out on God. And, and some call it, you know, lost, backslidden. Or, you know, some say lose you, say, however you want to mention it. If you can do that, what makes you think that you could lose and not have the manifestation of your healing? Now let me add this. I'm now, I want to help you with this. And we're still talking about fruit remain. We're still talking about God being a giver. If you're healed and you stay healed for three months, somewhere down the line, now I'm not confessing it, but the enemy will do what he can to try to slip that back in. And you will say, if you're not, if you don't know what I'm fixing to tell you, you go, oh, I thought I was healed. He's got you. In other words, you were snake bit. We got you healed of the snake. Here comes the snake slithering, and he bites you just a little bit of the symptom. You can feel the teeth just getting in the skin, and you go, I thought I would never get snake bit again. No, he's going to wait and catch you when you're when you have forgotten. And come and try to plant his teeth back in there again, so to speak. Now, let me ask you a question. Does it, does it take faith for you to be healed? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You want a scripture? John 5, the pool of Bethesda. The pool of Bethesda. That guy didn't even know who Jesus was. Jesus just walks through the pool of Bethesda. People say this, well, bless God, if you live, if you believe in healing, well, then why don't you run down there to the hospital and wipe them out? Well, then why didn't Jesus do that at the multitude at the pool of Bethesda? How come he didn't wipe out that hospital? John 5, I got you wheels turning now, boy. I got you hooked, line, and sinking. But I said that to help you. 
What, where, where in John 5 with the pool of Bethesda did he say that he had faith? Tell me where he even said he was the Son of God. Tell me where he even said Jesus. Messiah. Now let's read it. Verse 1. And after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethe Bethesda having five porches. Look at verse 3. And these lay a great multitude of the impotent folk, a blind, hot, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Now, did you? What would you say? Great multitude was. What's your definition? Five hundred, thousand. Somebody told me that they had been to Israel before, and they saw it. They said they figured it looked like maybe a thousand or two thousand could be there. Let's just make it modest and let's say a thousand. Thousand people, a hospital, and it's waiting on the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whatsoever, then the thirst after the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Are you ready? Here we go. Verse 5, And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. You know what? I've never thought about that. That's how old I am. So 38 years he had that. When Jesus saw him lie, when Jesus saw him lie down, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Jesus went to him and said, Wilt thou be made whole? Look what the guy said. The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, didn't even know who the man was. How could he have faith? He wasn't like this impotent man. wasn't like the woman with the issue of blood which had heard of Jesus. Jesus was going through Jerusalem and walked right by this pool of Bethesda and saw that guy and he knew in his spirit. He knew about the gifts of the spirit. Jesus knew he'd been there a long time. He said, Listen, will thou be made whole? He said, Sir, and this is what we do most of the time. We make an excuse because of man. This guy made an excuse. He said, Sir, how come he didn't say, Jesus, Jesus, you're the healer. No, he said, Sir. I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. Tell me where that man had faith to do that. The only thing he did was exactly what Jesus commanded him to do. But before that, If I said that, if I said that say Dustin had a bad knee and I, and I perceived it and I said, just move that knee in Jesus' name. He just done what I said. It wasn't prior faith. He didn't hear me preach on him. I just come up and told him that. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Then he said, And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day of the Sabbath. And the Jews therefore said unto him, That was cured. It was, it was the Sabbath day. Is it not awful for thee to carry thy bed? The Jews busted him. The big religious people said, Listen, dude, it's, it's Sabbath day. What you doing carrying? In other words, what you doing walking with that bed? That's work to them. He answered them. Are you ready? Here we go. He said, He that made me whole. He didn't even say it was the Son of God. Jesus, you know, that guy. He said, He, this, in other words, we would say this dude that made me whole. The same said unto me, He said, Take up thy bed and walk. Then they asked them, him, listen, what man, listen to me, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he said, and, and he that was healed was not who it was. He said he didn't, right there is right both faiths. He said he didn't know who he was. And Jesus had conveyed Himself away and a multitude being in the place. See, friend, what I want to get at, now let me tell you the difference so you understand. When the gifts of the Spirit are moving, it's a like, it's, it's, it's a lock, the water moving. And if you'll jump in, 
takes no faith. But it'll take faith to keep it. Amen. That's what I wanted to get you. Amen. 